Hello, and welcome back to Let's Build. Today we're going to be connecting the kingdom and building a simple bridge house along the river. Adding roads and connecting the major locations of the kingdom is a great way to lay the foundation for what we build in the future. And step one is building a bridge over this river and leading the road all the way to Dale. We're using cobblestone to keep the road looking developed. This close to the kingdom, I want to keep things a bit more developed and then branch away to our mossy mix road as we get further from civilization. So first things first, I use the cobble to start mapping out where we're going to. We'll have the bridge house on the edge of the land near the river, branching over it with a couple of bridges and then a small tunnel through the mountains that leads us to the plains beyond. The road is super simple to achieve. I made a brush that's an even mix of mossy cobble, bricks and grass, and then I masked that to the existing grass and just painted the road together. There's also a stone brick retaining wall here as you come out of the tunnel, and that's kind of to hold the dirt back, but it also gives us a place to add some detail, and in future, we can develop this little area since it's the last stop before you really leave the kingdom's protection. Now, back to the kingdom road, and I'm just using stairs, logs, and a fence and wall mix as we go along. I put down a nice big cobble platform here, and that's going to be the foundation for our bridge house. And this build is straightforward and simple. It's also totally achievable in survival. If you're playing on a world and wanna have something nice and cozy next to a river, give it a shot. I've added a kind of basement to the foundation, and then that's gonna lead down to a dock area that we've crafted here from logs. And I think that's gonna be a nice place to set sail from on like little boats and dinghies. And then keeping the same logs, I painted the usual framework for our house. It's going to be square and increase in size on the second floor, but otherwise it's just a standard little home. And material-wise, we're going to stick to a mix of cobble and stone brick on the base levels. But then as you get to the higher floors, I like to mix in some wood, making the top floors another texture is very Edwardian, and it helps a lot with the overall contrast of the build. Now it's a very simple roof that we're going for, but I still like to use red concrete to map out exactly where the roof is going to sit on top of the building. And then once I was happy with how that looked, I filled in the rest of the roof. Now, with the roof done, you can see more detail for the top level of the house. I really do like how the cobblestone looks around the edge of the walls here, and then when you use wood for the middle, it just makes it contrast a lot better. And then beyond that, we have a little decoration in the form of stairs. And then El Clasico, some coarse dirt surrounded by some trap doors, to make some pretty sweet looking flower boxes. I think flower boxes like that are something that we're always gonna keep coming back to as an easy way to add detail and also color with the flowers. So swinging around to the front, it's time to think about what to put in front of the house. And I figured I'd try and go a bit story with this and decided that, hey, the guy who lives here, he really, 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 really loves eggs. So we've built a little chicken coop for him. Omelets for days. And then some detail on the front door. Oh, and we also sunk the mini plaza thing, the square area that's in front of his house. We sunk that down by one block and, uh, and just gave it a bit of depth. Uh, 
And now we're going to come around to the docks. I spent a little time here getting the docks to look how I wanted them, so I'm a big fan of using fence gates as a more detailed version of wooden fences. I mean, yeah, you can right click on them and they open, but if you're just looking at them, they do look a bit more, you know, advanced. However, sometimes the look just doesn't do what you want it to, it doesn't work. All right, so the house is built and it's time to hit the bridge. So what's special about this bridge? Well, this is the main river access to the front of the kingdom, and we have a ship there that needs to get down the river somehow. So whatever we do with this bridge, it has to be flexible. I could have raised the bridge and had it higher up, but instead I wanted to try and build a bridge that can raise or lower on itself, unlike an axle. So that's why I've built some wooden wheels either side. It's a smaller design, but I'm super happy with it. I've also framed the wheels with some stone brick arches, and I think it looks like a really cool feature. And with those in place, I flipped it around and copied it to the other side of the river, where the bridge is going to be. And then once the detail was complete, it was time to think about the other side of the bridge. So two wheels means you need two people to raise and lower the bridge, kind of, right? But I don't want a whole house like we have here over on the other side of the bridge. Instead I wanted just more of like a little hut. So I built a simple stone brick log hut out of uh, logs, stone bricks, and uh, some wood for the roof. And so whoever's operating this bridge has a place to kind of stand and chill out. Then once that was complete, I took a quick moment to do a pass around the whole build, adding some sand on the side of the riverbank and little vegetation. Before we move on to the second bridge crossing the smaller river nearby. And this isn't even really a river, I mean no one's going to be sailing a ship down this, it's tiny. So we're going to do a simple arched stone brick design, much like you'd see over at the manor house for example. And again, for the detail, I do like fence gates, so while I'm decorating the bridge, I used a couple of those as well. And as dawn breaks on the kingdom, it's pretty exciting to be all connected up to Dale. Small builds like this are really, really important in building the character of the land. I mean, not everybody can live in a castle after all. And there's also a cheeky little chimney that we planted on top of the house. I think the smoke from campfires really helps add to the feel that the world is alive. So the bridge house is complete, vegetation and trees surrounding a cute little cottage that monitors who's coming in and out of the kingdom. And the wheels can spin on the bridge and raise it so that ships can pass under freely. Now I've played with the idea of using mods that let you rotate blocks. Some of you may remember a windmill, one of my first builds where I used a mod called UgoCraft to actually make the windmill spin, and it looked really cool. So if I can find a mod that lets me do that, I'll definitely see if I can use it. 
Next episode, we're going to be hitting the lands beyond the river, the giant gulf between here and Dale. And I have plans to do a really big cascading farm, as well as maybe a mountain castle. But let's wait and see on that. So hit like if you enjoyed the build, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, take care.